Hey everyone, hope you're all doing good. Today, I'm working on an iPhone XR that was sent here for a intermittent image problem. I started this video because what I'm finding inside of this iPhone XR is absolutely horrifying. Hey Jason, I have an iPhone XR that has a short somewhere that keeps the screen from turning on. The phone turns on fine and everything works perfect, even the screen for about 20 seconds, then the screen turns off as if it was locked and never turns back on. Restarting the phone right away doesn't show any Apple logo or anything, so something must be getting hot enough to keep the screen from turning on. Let me show you what it is that we're up against. When taking this phone apart, everything appeared to be pretty well factory. I mean, it did come open pretty easily, so I could tell that it had been open before. But looking inside the phone, all of our black patty stickers, um, and everything inside of this phone looks to be genuine. Like you can't tell that there's been a lot going on here. So after removing the screen, the first thing that I did here was had a look at the display connectors and I thought, aha, I mean, these look really crummy. I'm not sure if you can see exactly what I'm seeing with my eyes, but this looks really bad. Like there's gunk all down in these connectors. Now these connectors, the pins, they have a way of getting recessed back up inside of the connector. So if we buzz right along the connector here, you can see that we've got some gunk in here that really doesn't belong. I'm not sure what that is. It kind of looks like, uh, I don't know, maybe old flux or something. I'm not sure. But then this other connector, you can see that this first pin, it is recessed way back up in there to where you can't even really, you can't even see part of it. So I thought, aha, this is gonna be an easy fix. Just clean the connectors, right? Well, clean and fix that one pin there that's all out of whack. But then looking closer at this board, I start to see things that are genuinely horrifying. If we zoom in right here next to this display connector, you'll see that we've got a ball squeezing out. We have ball squeezage. This component down here looks as if it has maybe gotten hot or something. Now let's just move right along the board here. There's our dock flex connector. And here is our battery connector. Now just next to this lower antenna connector, we have more ball squeezage. And this component here looks as if, as if maybe it's been reballed or something. It's definitely been like scrubbed on. See how we've got the, the corner rounded off of it? These ICs, they normally have really, really uniform, straight 90 degree edges, but this one has the, the plastic on top is rounded off. So yeah. And then also look how offset that bottom shield is. That is just that is absolutely horrifying because that bottom shield, it's not easy to take off at all. Um, this is a customer that is also concerned about their data. So I've received a 10R here from a shop that, it is booting with no image, I've verified that. But on the 10R, what I'm seeing here with that shield being offset, balls squeezing here and there, that is not good news on the iPhone XR. And since the rest of this phone appears to be completely legit, like something from Apple, this is most likely going to be some sort of a nasty refurb. So I know that it is booting without image. Let's see if we can get lucky. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move toward cleaning the display connectors and then also fixing the wonky pins that are sort of sunk back in there and see if this thing will get an image. So first we're gonna get this pad sticker thing out of the way because it's just going to get all funked up with alcohol. So let's get some alcohol on here. Yeah, I guess this video is also going to be to somewhat cover my butt as well uh, because this phone, although it is doing exactly what they said it was doing, sort of. I mean, they said it was getting an image temporarily. I have not gotten this thing to get an image at all. And honestly, with what I've seen, uh, just with a brief microscope inspection, I'm not surprised to see that this board has problems. We're going to go for the easy fixes first. Because on a board like this, I'm honestly kind of scared to touch it. 
it's already worse off now than it was whenever it came in and I hadn't even touched it. So all I had to do was breathe wind onto this thing and it's went from sometimes getting an image to never getting an image. All right, let's clean these connectors the best that I can. Did we disconnect the battery? Yeah, we got the battery disconnected. Oh yeah, squeaky clean. Can you hear it squeaking? Well, I'm not so hopeful now. Now that I have scrubbed around on this connector, we can actually see that those pins are exposed. These connectors, the pins have a way of getting pushed back up inside the plastic and it'll cause them to not get connection. You'll get proper diode mode and resistance mode readings, but you still won't get a good connection. And it can be maddening. I've reworked entire backlight circuits and things because of a recessed pin before. That's sort of embarrassing. Okay, well, with just a brief cleaning of those pins, let's connect a screen and see if this is any different. I am really horrified about seeing balls squeezed out. I mean, I suspect that this is a refurb that the customer has been using. So if it's just something as simple as a, a dirty pen, we're going to go with it. Let's get a test screen. Here is my little bin of goodies here. We got a, uh, let's see, we got iPhone 6 screen, another 6 screen. Ooh, here we go. Yeah, how about this one? iPod 4th Gen. Can't ever have too many of those on hand. <laughs> I actually do data recoveries on there. Okay, iPhone 10. That's a 7 Pro. 11, 11 Pro, ah, XR, the last one I looked at. How about that? So here we have an iPhone XR screen. There we are. I'm gonna turn the power supply on, watching that current very closely. 10 milliamps, that's completely acceptable. Now we're gonna press the button to boot. And one, two, three, boot. Now all we've done is clean the connectors, right? I knew we wouldn't get so lucky. Not on this one, not with ball squeezage everywhere. So we can tell from the DC power supply that this phone is actually booting. I'm gonna give it a little longer here to finish booting and then we're just gonna turn it off. Boy, with the uh, little stickers removed from around the connector, you can really see that this shield has been off of there before. I mean, quite clearly, the shield has been off of there before. What in the world was done to this phone? Is this like an entire ground-up refurb? I mean, that shield was not soldered back on there straight. You can see that bottom shield is all wonky. What is causing this thing to all of a sudden not get an image since the rest of the phone is working? Oh, look, we've even got... You know that little black adhesive that goes on next to the board? We've even got that. So I've got the board out of the phone now. And you can see that somebody actually went through great lengths to make this look factory. They've even put this sticker back on the side. Oh yeah, we can definitely tell that that bottom shield has been soldered back on. It's been off of there and soldered back on. Oh yeah, for sure. Looks like it was soldered back on with an iron. How about NAND? What does NAND look like? Bunch of goop all over it. All right, so let's peel this sticker off the bottom here. Come on, baby. I'm trying to keep the adhesive on the sticker and not on the board. There we go. There we go. So I got it off there with the adhesive stuck on the sticker, not on the board, just so it's not picking up crap off the bench. And let's look at it. Dude, this thing is in terrible shape. This is an ugly, ugly, nasty refurb. Has it had NAND carved out? 
I actually don't think it has. One side of it sort of looks like it has. This side does. Hmm. No image. Okay. Well, let's start at the display connector. So let's have a look at the board view. Sorry, Paul, we're going to be using phone board today because I don't have a board view file for the XR to be used with flex board view. We're just going to go down the connector here and take some diode mode readings. The first pin here is a data line. Getting a 1.4, that seems to be massively high. Is that actually a data line? What is that line? Oh, that's one of our AVDDH lines. So to test that, it'll be necessary to reverse our polarity. So back black probe on ground, red probe on our pin. 0.59, that's acceptable. So let's go on down the line here. I believe the rest of these are going to be data lines. So we're getting a 0, 0.0, that is our ground. Next one is a data line, 0.3. Data line, ground, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, ground. So it's data line, data line, ground, data line, data line, ground, 0.3, that's right. 0.3, that's right. Ground, and then we should have two more 0.3s. That is right. Now let's check the other side of this connector. Point 0.25, it's a little low, so I'm gonna zoom in on the board view here and have a look at what that is. 1v8, it's okay for 1v8s to be a little low. Point 0.43, Point 60, that's on our third pin down. Panic B con, hmm. I'm getting an open line on our fourth pin. Check it with reverse polarity. Okay, nothing there. So looking at the board view, we are getting display test. What the hell is that? Let's ignore it. So a point three on number five, a point six on number six. Let's see what number six is. Reset con L, that might be a little bit high for that pin. You know, I don't have an XR board here to compare this against. Yeah, so we're getting a 0.67. That's almost a 0.7 on the reset line. 0 0.42, 0 0.56, 0 0.39, 0 0.56, 0 0.56, 0 0.39, and five six so this reset line that is troubling that's almost a point seven i would expect that to be uh, lower than that i really would so next to the connect here we can see that this line from this pin it's got a cap and then it's going through this resistor no it's actually not a resistor it's an fl uh, it's an inductor and then we have a resistor to ground. So this is very much the same exact circuit that we see on like the, the 6S and, and other iPhone models. So we need to look at FL5752 and check these components here. So looking at that connector from this orientation, that's gonna be the one, two, third component down. That's these components here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a diode mode reading on that component itself to see if we can tell if it is bad. So we'll just get on one side of it here. We're getting a 0.6 and a 0.6 on both sides. So that's most likely not bad. And then the resistor that we see on the board view, apparently that is a no stuff because I don't see it on this board. There's a gap and then what looks like is most likely another inductor. And we can check 
across that inductor here and we should get around a zero. Yeah, there we go, 0, 0.00 across that inductor. So nothing too fishy there. Where are the guts of this thing? Where are the display components? Let's look back at the board view because those readings are actually all looking pretty good on that connector. Let's see, one of these was a 5v7 line, right? All right, 5v7, all right, where does this go? So we'll follow it through this inductor. That line is all the way over here. And then our chestnut IC is actually right here, U5500. So back under the microscope, I'm noticing here and in inspecting the shield that is over U5500, look at this, we've actually got unmelted solder paste all around this shield. This looks like complete, total garbage. Look at this. None of that solder paste melted and they just left it on the board. Holy smokes. Okay, we're going to go ahead and remove this shield. I didn't get any immediate bad readings at the connector, so with a board that looks this bad, it's going to come down to visually inspecting it. I'm going to go ahead and remove the shield that's covering chestnut. So we'll get a little alcohol on this sticker and get this out of the way. Now, I don't mind these upper shields too, too much. It's the lower shields that cover like the baseband components that really bother me on the 10R. I would like to see how in the world Apple put these things together using such a high melting alloy on that shield. I mean, you almost, almost have to melt the solder under the components to remove that shield. But not quite, you can do it. See a lot of people cutting them. I typically use low melt and hot air. Okay, so I've got my hot air set on 430 degree, degrees C. And we're gonna start warming this up, carefully watching for something to melt. Yeah, the shield on the CPU, that's pretty low melting alloy. This shield here isn't too bad. But man, these lower shields down here, what Apple did is just evil. They have got the highest melting alloy I've ever seen in my life inside of a phone. Now also it is worth mentioning that sometimes with no power 10Rs, you'll find a shorted cap right next to the PMIC, which is under this sticker. So there are some that you can repair without removing this shield. Of course, I've always removed the shield and then later on figured out I could have done that without removing the shield. Oops, I've pulled it out of the holder. Too aggressive. Okay, some movement. Dang it, I pulled it out of the holder again. Okay, time for me to get a new holder. There we go. All right, let's see what this looks like behind door number one, shall we? Dude, this board, this looks really bad. I mean, really, really. They have like, now how in the world did they manage to squeeze all these balls out everywhere? Look, we've even got a ball down here between these coils, I think. How did they manage to do that, but not melt the alloy on these pads? Like. I just removed the shield, yet this alloy still did not melt. It's almost like some halfwit tried to use the same high melting temp alloy up here as what Apple uses down here on this shield, which is just horrifying. There is just too much carnage here. This is a phone that is supposed to go back working with the data intact because after all, I mean, it did just have simple problem, right? No image. This is looking an awful lot like a no fix. Boy, somebody has really had some struggles with this board. I think it is absolutely a refurb. 
Really am tempted to have a look under chestnut. I mean, this thing is absolutely disgusting though. Like, if I get image working on this, there is no way that I could send this back as a repaired board in good conscience. This is, uh, this is completely gross. Just imagine all of the same squeezage that we got going on around all these components. We've got like a whole row of components down here with ball squeezing. We got ball squeezing here. This is just awful. And down here it's got like somebody left some, somebody left some snot on the board for me. But just imagine with all of these balls squeezing, what does the underside of the CPU look like? It is an absolute miracle that this phone has ever been able to boot up and work, but I'm betting from the description that this is a phone that the customer has been using and they genu genuinely brought it into a shop for repair and said, please fix it without erasing my data. This thing needs a lot of work. At the very least, if I'm gonna fix it with all the balls everywhere, um, it still needs to be ultrasonic clean because there's like snot and corrosive, some sort of ominous fluid all over the board that's corroding components. This is actually a pretty big repair to try to fix. That is a stopping point for me on this one because if I continue from here, I could be sort of digging myself a grave. As it is at this point, I only have evaluation time in on this and I need to communicate with the customer and say, hey, if I can get image working on this, I'm nowhere near going, you know, there's no way I can guarantee this to be a fully functional phone because this is absolutely nasty. But I need to see if they are after just the data. And if they are, I may try to repair it to a point where I can send it back to them, at least working well enough that they, they can access their data. Now on phones like that, phones like this, I still try to create a local backup before it gets shipped. Otherwise, I mean, what are the odds of this thing getting back to them and not working and probably pretty significant because it just, it looks bad, really, really bad. So I think that's going to be it for this one for now. If I continue this, I'll come back to this video and add more to it. Otherwise I may post this video exactly like it is. All right, I am back with this one. I've gotten the go ahead from the customer to proceed with the repair for the sole purpose of being able to access the data. Let's have a look again at these connectors. I've got it under the microscope and zooming in, looking at the display connectors. Again, these just, this looks really bad. Looking at the pins along these connectors, do you see how we've sort of got like a, some sort of a substance bridging between the pins? And then down inside the connector, we've actually got the same substance like down in the bottom, some sort of a gooey, it's all down inside of the connector. The camera really isn't doing this justice. So we've got all this stuff. I mean, this looks like liquid damage, right? I mean, this looks like some sort of uh, a re-solidified solid that was once suspended in liquid. And that's all down in between all of these pins. This could actually be causing us a no image problem. Now, I suspect that that's all under the connector as well, since we've got it like here along the pins and I can see down inside this connector it's just all down into the bottom of here so whatever this is is absolutely nasty first thing I'm gonna do I normally don't do this first but um, I'm actually gonna ultrasonic clean this now since I don't like removing these bottom shields but obviously somebody else already has I'm gonna go ahead and remove the CPU shield and we're gonna be ultrasonic cleaning just from this part down and let's see what we get. So let's get the CPU shield off of here. Now, much like other refurbished boards, this one has a little strip of glue here where they've put a strip of glue along the top of the shield. So we're just gonna go ahead and apply a little heat and peel that out of there. I'm really curious to see what this looks like under the CPU shield anyways, right? All right, so we've got the glue out of the way. Let's start warming it up to remove this shield. Now, the CPU shield on these, it comes off pretty easy. It's not like these bottom shields that are an absolute, complete, total nightmare. So I'm just gonna sort of grab a hold of it and apply some light upward pressure. So 
See it starting to move? Oh yeah, baby. Come to Papa. Yep, it's exactly what I expected. Balls squeezing out all over the place. I mean, look at this board. Holy smokes. This customer was using this phone. And then one day, it just all of a sudden stopped getting image. I mean, really, look at this thing. That is madness. You know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing that the CPU has been replaced. Not replaced, but reballed and put back on. And man, they just got solder swelling all freaking over the place. This CPU's definitely been carved out of there. Let's get it out of the holder so that I can flip it around and work with it. <laughs> what is it with me getting bored sent here for no image that are prior CPU reballs? Oh yeah, definitely a CPU reball. We can see all under the edges of the CPU. I feel sorry for the customer that bought themselves a nice brand new 10R and didn't realize that it had this sort of carnage going on on the inside. I mean, if you like balls, this is definitely a phone for you. So I'm sort of starting to switch my tone here. I'm thinking that maybe it's not so much likely to be due to an issue with the connectors as it is going to be an issue with balls squeezing everywhere and also this thing being a prior CPU rework attempt. I'm just going to brush some of this stuff off of here. Now I gotta say, they did do a really good job of reballing the CPU and not swelling any solder around the main PMIC. But, boy, they sure sw swelled the solder around the Wi-Fi IC. Holy smokes. Why I'm really tempted to flux that CPU and give it a float. Because that may actually be all that is wrong with it. Okay, well, just in case, this is just simply... Sometimes it's hard to judge a book by its cover, even whenever the cover looks really bad. But just in case, this is just an issue with salts between the pins on the connectors. I guess I could check with a multimeter, but this looks really bad. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and ultrasonic clean the top end of this board so that I can see much more clearly what is going on. And also, if it is just an issue with the connector with nasty stuff then it might actually get image working. So I'm going to go ahead and ultrasonic clean this and I'll be right back. All right, let's see if we can make this nasty board just a little bit less nasty with my nasty ultrasonic cleaner, shall we? I'm actually out of Branson EC. It should be arriving today though. So I'm going to try to just go right up to those bottom shields because I don't really want to get it wet under those bottom shields. We're going to give this about a minute. Uh, 30 seconds on one side, 30 seconds on the other side. It's about 30 seconds. I'm going to rotate it. I don't think it really matters to rotate it, but I believe the, uh, the transducer or whatever it is that makes this god-awful noise is pretty well getting one side better than the other. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I have just literally got flux clouding off of this board. See the cloud coming off of the board? It would be a lot easier to see if my ultrasonic cleaner was actually clean, but look at that cloud. The flux is literally just clouding off of this thing. Now after ultrasonic cleaning, we're going to use a napkin and just sort of soak up as much of the ultrasonic cleaning solution that we can. And then once I'm confident that we've got enough of that liquid soaked up, we're going to throw that napkin away and grab an alcohol bath. Now, I don't want to completely sink this in the bath because I didn't remove these bottom shields and I sort of don't want to get that wet down there. So I'm just going to turn it up on its side here and flood as much of this as I can. We're just trying to displace the water with alcohol. We're trying to get rid of the cleaning solution and replace it with alcohol that evaporates much, much easier. Now it's hard for me to get the alcohol up here on the connectors that I'm so worried about, but when I turn the board over, we're actually getting it on the connectors. Now, once I am confident that we've sufficiently flushed this board, I'm gonna take a fresh napkin, 
and soak up as much of the alcohol as I can. The next thing I'm going to do is actually place this board on a preheater. So to dry this board, I'm going to sit it nicely here on this preheater and I'm going to turn the heater on to a temperature that is not hot enough to melt solder or actually hot enough to boil water even because we don't want anything swelling. I'm hesitant to say exactly what temperature I'm using because this thing is not calibrated and your temperature might be different than my temperature. We're going to set this heater. I'm going to start at 195 degrees C. After about an hour, I raise that temperature to 200 C. After about two hours, I'm going to raise it to 205 C. Now that's as high as I go. I'm going to leave it at 205 C for two or three hours. I just really want to be absolutely certain that this board is dry because there's a good chance that I'm going to have to use hot air on it. And let's say you have a little bit of water between the RAM and the CPU or a little bit of water trapped anywhere on this thing. And then you go grabbing the hot air gun and heating it to 350 degrees C that water swells up and can pop. You can literally, cause it to snap, crackle, and pop, and absolutely destroy this thing. So it's really, really important to make sure it's completely dry. So with this thing set at 195C, I can actually lay my hand right on it. And it's just like, it's really warm. It's not what I would consider to be hot. Maybe without the gloves, it might actually burn me a little bit. So it's a pretty low temp. I'm not feeling like it's actually 195C. All right, boy, has it been a really, really long day. I am back with this thing. It has been on the dryer all day long, and I'm confident that it is completely bone dry. So let's have a look at it and see how much different it looks. So you can see my ultrasonic cleaner has did this thing quite a bit of good. Uh, there's no longer any visible flux around any of these components. Uh, the solder balls, the unsolidified solder paste that we had all along here is all gone. Uh, no longer any carnage showing there. Let's look around the CPU. Oh yeah, it's cleaned up quite nicely. You know, there's a chance that simply ultrasonic cleaning this will get an image to work again for two reasons. Some of the flux that was around here could have had like other stuff mixed with it and caused it to be conductive. But also the display connectors, these looked, they looked okay. But they had like this bridging going on along the sides of them here where there was like uh, some sort of substance, some ominous substance that was bridging between the connections, both along the pins as well as down inside of the connectors. Now, I have a little bit of a confession to make. A lot of you already know this, but many times when I'm recording a video, I, I sort of get caught up in the recording and... It affects my judgment in such a way that sometimes these repairs don't go exactly the way that they should. Um, one thing that I should have checked on this before ultrasonic cleaning, I mean, you can see we've got balls swelled here. Uh, we've got a little, what looks like maybe a ball. Eh, I'm not sure if that's a ball or not, but we've just got balls swelled out over the, all over the place. Now, these boards, whenever you heat them up hot with this rubbery overfill over the components, these components will oftentimes become separated. So before ultrasonic cleaning this, I really, I think that one's moving. I really should have peeled this stuff off of here and looked at it real good. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and pop it into a housing, make sure it still boots with no image, and then we'll go back and reevaluate things. Test screen connecting up. So we've got power button, test screen, and now we're gonna hook up the power supply. And now we're gonna press the button to boot. One, two, three, boot. We are drawing 80 milliamps. Oh, we got just brief image. Did you see that? The image just briefly flashed and then went off. That is exactly what the customer said that this phone was doing. It would just get image for a little bit and then it wouldn't get image again until it was turned off for a while and then turn back on. He felt like something was heating up that was causing it to not get image. So, oh look here, we've got image back again. Oh, no more image. See all this? I bet you couldn't see that. Image came on. For just a moment. And then it goes off, right?
I'm hitting the button to turn it off. Turn it on. Boy, something is hanging by a thread. So this phone is actually working with image now, but I can't send it back this way because I know that it's not going to work again. I've seen the image come on, go off, come on, go off. Like something is just barely hanging on, and I think I might know what it may be. All right, folks. I think the problem here may have actually been what should have been obvious to me, you know, other than the ball squeezage everywhere all over this entire board. I guess I should be more fair to myself. I did go through in diode mode. I checked all of the pins, but this phone has an intermittent connection somewhere. I really should have checked these components here because I think I see one moving already. Any component that's covered in this stuff, when the board's heated up to the point where the solder melts, these components can pretty easily become detached. I'm not seeing anything immediately obvious that it's moving. I expected components to begin falling off by now. That's usually what they do. Huh. So maybe it wasn't such a simple overlooked issue here. Let's just uh, keep carving at it. Nothing loose yet. These are all soldered down. Crazy. Yeah, no big deal here. I feel like most everything over here is going to be for, on the other connector, is probably going to be for touch. Not too much going on here. These are all staying where they should be. I've actually smudged up the solder on a couple of them. Still doesn't look near as bad as the half of, uh, as the rest of the board. Yeah, nothing coming loose here. These are all staying down. Now, how about over here where we had this one sort of peeking through the rubbery coating. That looks to me like it was done with somebody's pry tool. Not actually a ball squeezing. There's nothing coming loose here. These are all soldered. I'm not going to keep picking at this. All right, well, it's not the components along the display connector. Uh, let's have a look back down at the bottom side of the board, straight to the old chestnut area. I wonder what the odds are of us having a corroded connection under the chestnut ICR. Probably not near as high as the odds of uh, having a problem with the reball on the CPU. Uh, let's have a look at that reball now that we got the flux cleaned off. Oh yeah, it's beautiful work. I feel like a couple of the balls maybe stretched a little bit, like it had solidified after being moved just a hair. But the reball actually looks, uh, it looks really good, aside from having so much heat that it squeezed heat out around everything else on the board. I think I may go ahead and just put another chestnut IC on it. 
There are actually probably a hundred things that could cause this thing to have an intermittent image. I would say there's a higher probability of it actually being a connection under the CPU. However, the CPU reball on this looks really good, aside from balls squeezing out all over the place. I'm going to go ahead and try to put a replacement chestnut IC on here and see if it may just be a failing driver. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the chestnut IC is the little chip that produces power for the display, and we're going to replace it. Let's grab us a donor board. Now I know that this IC looks like it might have like, you know, some heating or something on the side of it, but I can assure you it is a good IC because this is a 100% confirmed working donor board until I start stealing components off of it. I'm really, really thankful that a lot of these chips are available on several different boards. So we don't have to have an iPhone 10R board to steal this off of. I used to have tons of these in stock, but I hardly ever use a chestnut IC anymore. So it doesn't make much sense for me to keep them in stock. And we'll just move that little cap out of the way. Don't need that there anyway. And now the board's pretty well up to temp, so we'll just swipe this right up off of there. I like to pick up the board by the chip and then let the board fall out from under it. This allows removing of ICs with the very minimal heating as possible and is most always a clean lift. All right, without skipping a beat, we'll move this right on over to reballing station B here. Now for smaller ICs like this, I just do them directly on the bench. But when I get into larger ICs like NAND and stuff, I do those on a paper towel. All right, so we've got a decent amount of flux. Oh, really? Really? It's just beautiful. All right. This is 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. I purchased this on Amazon. Clean this right on up. Now I like to try to get it to stay stuck to the table because the chip quick flux I'm using it will hold it down real good, and this saves it from sliding around while I'm cleaning it. See it? It's nice and glued to the table. Marvelous. We'll take us a stencil here, and we're going to put some nice shiny new balls on it. All right, here we go. Let's smear us some paste down in here. I'm going to try to just use the dry paste I've got on my blade. Yeah, there we go. It's not so dry. On this phone, although hesitant, I am going to try to send it back uh, working and able to start up so that they can see what's on it um, and also be able to run a backup. I think it'll survive. I mean, it's a phone that they've been using, amazingly enough, right? All right, let's pop our stencil up off of here. Come on, chip should stay on the table. There we go. And now we're going to give it one last nice floating. There we are. We still got some straggling beads. We'll heat it once more. There we go. All right, and there we have a nicely reballed, beautiful non-hairy symmetrical leaded balls. Chestnut IC. Okay, back over to the customer's board. Here is their not so crummy chestnut IC. It used to look really bad. Now, I always like to put a mark somewhere on the board, like I'm gonna do right here. That little line I just put on the board, for me, that's going to represent pin one for this chestnut I see. And now we're going to go ahead and yank this puppy off the board. I'm just going to start warming the whole entire board up. Lord knows we don't have to worry about floating the CPU, now do we? Although they probably use some lower melting alloy on it, so we'll still want to be careful. Curious to see what this looks like underneath. That actually did not look too bad. I think there might be maybe one pad there that could have been detached. 
There's definitely fuzz under it. Weird. Huh. All right, we'll kick that aside. While the board is still hot, we're gonna apply some flux. And scrub off these pads and get them ready to receive our nice shiny balls. Gonna need a little more flux than that, aren't we? Nothing like cleaning them off real good and spotless and then squirting flux all over them. All right, that looks good enough for me. Now let's grab our replacement I see that I have laid here on the bench. Right there, big one. And I can just see where our pin one marker is. That's good. So a tiny little bit of flux, although I probably didn't need to add any. I am just really picky, guys. I don't like what I'm seeing here. There is a tiny little bit of solder. There we go, much better. All right, let's set this little IC down in here. About like that. There we go. It should go about right there. Okay, the chip quick flux now has it locked in place. And now we're going to heat it up and get it melted into place. We should see it settle right on down in there. All right, so I was a little farther off than what I thought. All right, a little nudge and it is on the board. From here, I'm gonna let it cool off a little bit and then we're gonna give it one more test run. So with this one, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to tell exactly when it is fixed uh, because it's an intermittent problem. So once I see that it powers up and it has image on the screen, I have to leave this phone running for a while and periodically come back to it and make sure it behaves consistently. We'll connect the dock flex and connect the battery. Now, we're just going to use a standard charger and put this thing through a series of tests because I believe it's going to have image now. This is what I get for assuming. We're drawing 800 milliamps of charging current, one amp of charging current, It is booted, but still has no image. I just heard the charge connect tone. So just now we either broke image or we didn't make any difference at all. Test screen out of the way. Power button. And take the board back out of it. I'm gonna look and see and make dang sure I line chestnut up properly. Looks good. Mmm, boy, what a strange problem. Okay, the board's still kind of a little bit warm. This customer said that they had to leave it sit until the board was absolutely cold before they could get it to get image again, and then even then it was just briefly. This one's gonna be a mystery. Is it gonna be a coil? It's more likely gonna be something to do with this CPU reball. Unless somebody reballed the CPU to fix image. That would be crazy. Well guys, it is about, oh, it's late in the evening and it's time for me to take a break from this workbench. I have been here for many, many, many hours. So I'm gonna put this one aside and I'm gonna be coming back to it in the morning. So 
I came back to this today, determined to get it working. I took the chestnut IC back off the board. I took a bunch of diode mode readings under the IC. I really couldn't find anything out of whack. So I put another chestnut IC on the board. I verified that 5v7 was present, but this phone still did not get an image. So I had pretty well decided that this was gonna be a CPU level issue and this phone would likely need the CPU taken off of it, reballed and put back on, which would actually be much easier since somebody's already done it once. Here's this phone. We have working image. We still have working image. I've had working image now for a long time. Let me show you what I did to get image working on this phone. I decided that before doing anything as crazy as pulling the CPU off and reballing it, it would be worthwhile to just go ahead and give it a gentle refloat. So what I did was apply just a small amount of flux as I could to be sure that it flowed through and out the other side. You don't want like a whole lot of flux because a bunch of bubbling and stuff can actually shift balls out of place and uh, you want this process to be pretty gentle. So. This was actually a little more flux than I was comfortable with, but I was watching the other side of the CPU to be sure whenever the flux would come out the other side so that I knew that the whole thing was fluxed. And then I proceeded to gently warm this thing up with hot air. I've got the hot air set on 350 degrees C with an airflow of 40, and I just warmed this thing up very gently, and I watched the components along the side of the CPU uh, checking with my tweezers to see whenever those components melted to use that as like a gauge so that I would know whenever uh, you, know, you know the rest of the balls under the CPU melted. Now I apologize but as this warms up it is laying directly on my mat so the mat as it heats up is actually swelling and the board raises up some and sort of puts it out of focus but I really just want to show you what I did. I, I, I re hot at the CPU. So we heat this thing up good and hot. And once I'm confident that it is floated, I remove the heat and gradually let it cool down. So success? No, 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 not quite. After I did this to this board, whenever I connected the DC power supply, it would instantly draw two amps of current and there was a short somewhere. So my hot air caused a short somewhere. So from there, I flipped over to thermal imaging and with thermal imaging, I could see that U6150 was producing a hot spot as soon as the power was connected. So obviously there was likely something shorted under U6150. And if we look at the board view, you can see my heating took place from this side of the board and U6150 was right here and also U6150 was completely filled with underfill and that's likely where I had created a short. So I spent some time picking around and clicking on balls and pads here and, and tried to figure out exactly you know where things were going. And it, to me, it looked like there was a VDD boost short because I could actually, um, I would get a direct short to ground on VDD boost. The real strange thing is that after I checked it once or twice, the short actually went away, but then the phone would only draw 80 milliamps, 300 off. 80 milliamps, 300 off. So I'm like, oh, I killed this phone, I killed this phone. So I went ahead and I removed U6150 from the board and that's where we're at right now. So. Refloating the CPU completely fixed the image problem on this phone. It is working, and I have not had a single time where it wouldn't get imaged since I did that. Although I have told them that this thing is very likely not going to be fully functional, I'm still not going to leave U6150 off the board, so against my better judgment, I'm going to go ahead and put that back on the board, and then uh, we're going to call this one fixed. So under this IC, you can see how we've got this flattened solder right here. When I pulled this IC off the board, where the IC sat was just completely flat with that. It almost looked like we had exposed ground plane or something, but now I believe that that is actually solder, and we're going to find out right now because we're going to reball this IC. Let's add a little bit of flux. And I believe that little bit is going to melt. Yep, that's what it was. So this had um, actually made like a flat plane of solder, from my hot air. Isn't that something? Somebody like hot aired the total snot out of this board and I come along and gently refloat the CPU one time and 
cause a short. All right, let's get this cleaned up, get some nice shiny new balls on it, get it back in the phone, and then watch this thing boot without image. I'll lose my mind. Now, I don't think I have a stencil for this, so we're just going to wing it. It's probably similar to something else I got. That looks about right. Yeah, we'll use that. It's probably the same as like a backlight driver or something. Let's get us some paste in here. And yeah, my paste is getting a little dry. Uh, it's actually getting a lot dry. We'll use it anyway. Oh yeah, baby. All right, let's gradually start warming this up. A little more gradual than that. Well, it appears dry until you start to heat it up. Okay, here we go. I see some meltage. I'm going to do this real slow and... Voila! Shiny new balls. Well, semi-shiny. We're not going to be picky on this one. Give this one last float. And there we have it. It looks like there might be a little bit of gunk in there on that one, but we're going to leave it. Okay, set this aside. Yeah, I know I should just quit while I'm ahead, but I am going to go ahead and put this chip back on the board. So we'll warm this up a little bit. Add some flux. Way too much flux. Holy mackerel. And let's get this thing back on the board. Oh boy, I can't tell where pin one is. We're going to have to scrub that a little bit. Too much flux on the IC. Oh, there it is. There's my dot showing. Okay, here we go. Let the chip go. They're starting to settle down on there. And that is on. All right, let's uh, let the board cool off and see if this thing still gets an image. And then I will be able to sleep at night. I just, you know, I told them that most likely won't be fully functional. I don't want to do anything that I know is going to make it absolutely not fully functional. Um, that IC U6150, that is the Gecko IC. Honestly, I don't know exactly what it does. So if you would like to let me know in the comments below, I would appreciate it. Okay, so with that back on the board, I'm going to push the button to boot. 80 milliamps, 130, Apple logo. So we didn't break anything. Oh, passcode screen. Blank, light up, blank, light up. We're gonna be good to go. All right, I've got this phone fully reassembled. We still have working image. We are up to 40% charge. Now I am absolutely curious to see if baseband is working. I didn't look under that bottom shield, but... Uh... We have working baseband, seriously? And is Wi-Fi working? We have working Wi-Fi, ah, sort of unbelievable. Now, I do have to say that what I did in this video with refloating the CPU, please, please, please do not do that unless all of the underfill has already been carved out from under it and it is a prior CPU reball. If you try to do that to a factory CPU, you will absolutely positively kill the phone and then it will definitely need a CPU reball. So that is gonna be it for this one, guys. This phone is ready to go back and uh, this will be a happy customer. And also I have a local backup in case for any reason they get the phone back and it doesn't turn on. So um, that is it for now, everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.